I'm Ryan Boyd. Me and my wife, Glorianne, are avid hunters and outdoorsmen. We also own a nuisance wildlife removal company. We have a deep respect for all wildlife and are passionate about conservation and helping people get out of the house or office and reconnect with our wild roots, which is how we believe God created us to live. We always have our hands full dealing with some kind of critter, so please join us and get ready. It's a wild life. What's up, you wild animals? So today we wanted to talk to you guys about nuisance alligators and kind of how this process and the system works. So I'm a nuisance alligator trapper for the state of Florida. And what that means is we don't just go out and just trap alligators anytime we want to, whatever alligators we want, not at all. We actually get calls and permits from the state that are called in by homeowners and the state determines what is a nuisance alligator and what's just an alligator being an alligator. Believe it or not, the majority of the nuisance alligators that we catch are about this big, four to five feet. Um, they really can't do much harm, but these are the majority of the alligators that we catch. Now, if the alligators are under four feet, we can legally relocate them. So we've got an alligator that's um, uh, nestled in on a guy's front porch. A lot of times that'll happen if there's like a little breezeway, um, alligators will just walk and kind of find their way in there and then they can't really figure out how they got in there. They'll just kind of settle in. It's like a little nook or a cave, a little um, comfortable spot for them. But obviously it's not comfortable for the homeowner for an alligator to be sitting on the front porch right by their front door. Quite a surprise. So we're gonna head that way. It sounds like just a little guy, two to three feet. These little guys can still take off a finger. So um, gotta be careful, but we're headed that way about half an hour out. It's gonna be open a little bit. I know. I'm just kind of getting it secure. There we go. There he is. Just a little guy. Aww. We caught one today that could eat this one. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, he's probably about, I guess he's maybe just below two feet. Just a cute little guy. <laughs> But we're, we're going to actually take him and relocate him to the river. Um, so, uh, you know, I was on a call and I came out and I heard somebody was knocking on the door. So I saw him climbing to my door a little up. So luckily I didn't open the door. And then I came through the garage and I saw him sitting here. So <laughs> I got scared, but you know, I, 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 I didn't open the door. Well, welcome cute. to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> The infamous death roll, he doesn't like that. I'm just gonna get him away from the water. All right, guys, it's been a really productive day today. Uh, we've got a truck full of alligators, but this guy is just under four feet, and he's definitely big enough to hurt you. You can see those teeth, but we are allowed to relocate these guys to the river if they're under four feet. So he's not gonna hurt anybody. He's not gonna cause anybody any harm. We're gonna go ahead and turn him loose, and hopefully he swims off. Sometimes they will try to spin back on you. There you go, you're free, buddy. And there he goes, right into the river. There he goes. So if the alligators are over four feet, we can take them to a licensed facility. And what a licensed facility means is that's a place like Alligator Farm, Gatorland, uh, Gator Boys, Alligator Rescue. But the problem is all of these facilities are at capacity. They just don't have any room for any more alligators. This alligator here was actually eating some neighborhood ducks. Um, it was kind of a traumatic situation for a lot of the children and the homeowners. Alligator was just being an alligator. That's what alligators do. They eat ducks, they eat turtles, they eat fish. Big alligators eat other alligators. It's part of nature. Nature is brutal. These guys are at the top of the food chain, and that's all he was doing is just eating some ducklings. But we got a call that he needed to be removed.
came after me and a couple of the, uh, the painters. No and way. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. he chased me halfway up. Really? Yep. Wow, that's crazy. That's was anyone feeding him? Like, is that why I'm he sure. was in more? Oh, yeah. 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 Then we saw a baby duck um, probably about two weeks ago, and it made it about a week. And then it went missing. And then a couple days after that, we heard a female screaming pretty loudly on the bank. And then I watched for her and I saw her get some air and then she looked like she may have been hurt. And she glided on the water and it probably wasn't 30 seconds of her screaming and screaming and then it just took her under. So yeah. And we have little ones that like to fish and we have a little dog. I and love we just Want to make sure everybody's safe. You don't see. And unfortunately, he's over four feet, so he has to be euthanized. So what we're going to do, he's not really big enough to take to a processor. Um, just th There's not enough meat on this guy to justify trying to sell it to a processor. That'd be, I mean, it'd be like $10 for this alligator. It's not even worth it. So what we're going to do, since we do have to euthanize the alligator by law, we're going to go ahead and throw him in the smoker and uh, cook him whole for Mother's Day. And I can't think of a better way to say Happy Mother's Day than to cook her up an entire alligator. Mom, I love you. In my opinion, if you don't want an encounter with an alligator, if you're just deathly afraid of them, do not buy a house on the water. If you buy a house on the water, more than likely you're, you're going to have an encounter with an alligator. Um, there's an average of one alligator to every body of water in Florida. There's over two million alligators. That's about one alligator for every 10 people. So they're everywhere. They've been here for millions and gajillions of years, and they're going to be here for a long time coming. We, they have a very um, managed program for these alligators, and um, there's no shortage of them, so that's the good thing. So we're gonna go ahead and dispatch this alligator, get him ready for the smoker, and get him all cleaned up. All right, so we've got this little gator here. He's all skinned out, and we're excited to get him on the smokers up. We, we always use this, uh, it's called strawberries. Um, it's just a seasoning from somewhere up north. I don't even know where they're from, but not a sponsor or anything like that. We throw it on everything. It's absolutely delicious. So when, whenever we say we season it with strawberries, people think we're saying actual strawberries, but that's just the name of the seasoning. But we throw it on everything. It is just delicious. So I'm just going to just put a thin dust of this seasoning, actually more of a kind of a thick dust of this strawberry seasoning all over this alligator. It's kind of a Cajun with a little bit of sweetness to it. Just everything we put it on is excellent. But I'm gonna load him down with this and then just flip him over and uh, get all that, get that cheek meat. That cheek meat is from what I've heard some of the best meat. People think, you know, there's just gator tail and that's pretty much the only meat on an alligator, but that's completely false. You got ribs, all the legs have meat. Um, the cheeks are supposed to be some really good meat there. And uh, I'm excited to get this guy going. We're gonna cook him for about four hours. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a chicken in the mouth of the alligator. And when the chicken is done, that's how you kind of know the alligator's done. All right, so we've got our chicken here and this chicken's actually been brining for about 20 hours. So what you wanna do anytime you're smoking a chicken or a turkey or really any type of meat, you wanna to try to brine it if you can because when you're low and slow cooking, it takes a lot of the moisture out of the meat. And also, we're gonna season this with our strawberry seasoning, just like we did the gator, but when you do that, when you just season the outside of the chicken, only the outside is seasoned. When you brine it, the entire chicken, so every bite is gonna be packed full of all that seasoning and all that flavor because it's been soaking in it. So this would be really good. So we're just gonna season it with the strawberries, and then we're gonna get the gator on the smoker, and we're gonna put the chicken in the gator's mouth and then when the chicken's done, when we have an internal temperature of, I believe, let me ask my dietitian, 165. 165, that's how we know the chicken's done, and then that's how we'll know the gator's done. So let's get him on the smoker, and then we'll put the chicken in his mouth. We probably should have checked to see if he would fit first. I know if we wrap his tail around, he should fit. I mean, if I was gonna go and I was an alligator, this is how I'd wanna go. With a big, fat, juicy chicken in my mouth. 
All right, and we're not doing this for camera. The funny thing is, is we would have done this whether we were recording or not. This is how we celebrate Mother's Day, and today's my birthday, so um, we're having all the moms and the family over later, and uh, I'm excited. This ought to be really good. All right, here we go. This thing is ready. We uh, tested the temperature on the chicken. It's actually at about 190, so we're, we're uh, I was very adamant about making sure this is well done because Gloria Ann can't have anything undercooked or raw because we are not only pregnant, but we just found out we're pregnant with triplets. So we just found out about a week ago or so, and uh, she'll trying to wrap her heads around it because it's just crazy. We weren't even trying. Pretty amazing. All right, so we did it. It took about four hours. We've got a chicken in a gator's mouth, and um, it was, it's Mother's Day, so this is what she requested. She wanted to have an alligator <laughs> with a chicken in his mouth. Yeah. I don't know. It was a weird request, but that's what she wanted. So, mother's first. You want to get in here and try this? All right. Let's do first. it. I love, I love the uh, sense of adventure. Do you want tail, leg, or eyeball? Leg. How about some of the chicken? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, well, okay, where's the... Can't go yeah, there, there we go. Can't There's go a good piece. Look at that. Get in, get in here. Oh, okay, look we're going to do it. Look how white and juicy that meat oh, is. Wow. You got this. Right. Gotta try. Here we go. No filter. <laughs> oh, okay. Mmm, not bad. Oh, it's so close. I can't believe it. I did not. I did not expect it. It's like it's like a chicken. chicken. He's smiling through it. This part. I saw it. Yeah, it's like real. Yeah, it's real it's like real it's like it's like fire. Yeah, it's almost like taking crab meat out of the. Mm. Super yeah. juicy. It's that kind of thing. Mmm. <laughs> We got alligator. My brother brought some brisket. We cooked up some quail. Just an awesome night celebrating Mother's Day, and we appreciate yeah, all the mothers out there. We're celebrating something else. It's Brian's 35th birthday. And his My 35th birthday today. Favorite dessert: his brownie pudding surprise, whatever it is. And we're celebrating three babies. We got three little biscuits in the oven right here, so we're excited about that. A lot to celebrate today. Until next time, stay, stay wild. wild.